We're coming to you this week on the show from Shiro's in Mumbai. And to start off the show, we're going to head out a short distance from Mumbai with wine. Zinfandel Rosé, Chenin Blanc, Chardonnay. Now, these are the names you'd normally associate with the south of France. Well, not quite. So there you say, the lucky guy got to drive down to Nasik to have a drink with the founders of York Wines. Here in the wine capital, the Bordeaux of India, Nasik, which has over 2,000 acres of vineyards under cultivation, of which 150 are utilized by the young startup behind me, York Winery. Without wine, they say, love lives not, and all the joys of mortals die. A part of Greek mythology, every winemaker probably believes in something which explains the extreme passion they bring to their business. For the father-son duo of Lilo and Ravi Gurnani, it's no different. Agriculture is one product which the more passion you give to it. And uh, you, uh, we, I, I talk to my grapes, you know, that's the way I do it. I go to vineyard, I talk to my grapes. I love uh, grapes, I love my fruit. The entire journey began in 2004 when the land was first acquired. In 2006, the first vineyard was planted with it leading to its first plucking in two years. The total investment required for the project was 8 crores and Lilo, a successful businessman himself, funded the project by investing 6 crores of his own funds and by taking a loan for the remainder. Unlike all their larger competitors in Nasik, York adopted a differentiated approach by acquiring only 9 acres of land. Instead, they focused on contract farming, thus cutting down their costs. In true startup mode, they also innovated with the flavour of their wine. We have a South African winemaker. Uh, South Africa is a new world winemaking country. A lot of their, uh, their ideas may be different from a French winemaker or an Italian winemaker. It, and it's, it's, very, it's more consumer driven whereas the old world winemaking is more uh, process driven. The winery business has a one year cycle with the grapes being plucked and crushed in February. From the drain press where the crushing takes place, the winemaking process begins. After the grape crushing, the juice is brought into one of these tanks which are about 20 feet tall. It's here that yeast is added which initiates the fermentation process which converts the sugar into alcohol and the juice into wine. Wine, which of course isn't yet ready for consumption. So the next step is the filtration of the wine, where its sediments are removed and filtered out. The clarified wine is now transferred into the barrel cellar, where it ages, mellows and gains in character until... It needs about three to four months more. After a year, the wine does finally get ready for consumption, after which it's bottled, cocked and labelled. York has five regular wines and two reserves in its cellar, all priced between 295 and 595 rupees a bottle. Attractive pricing, which has no doubt helped it to reach out to wine retailers within Nasik. They have priced their wines excellently. For, uh, like for example, their reserve wines, they're around about 590 range. And all the other premium wines in the same category, they sell for around 1000 bucks. The winery produced 60,000 litres of wine in its first year and scaled it up to 225,000 litres in its second. Revenue in the first year stood at 60 lakh rupees, amounting to a sale of only 25% of the manufacturing capacity of the winery. This though, as the founders insist, isn't uncommon given the cash flow cycle that governs the wine industry. The grapes yield is only once a year. There's a six week window in February and March when all the grapes are ripening and that is the time we have to crush the grapes. So you're, you're investing a lot, of, uh, a lot of money in raw materials in February and March and then you have to recover that through the rest of the year and the majority of which is uh, towards the end of the year during the festive season. So that's a unique cash flow cycle. With an increased distribution network and retail expansion into the metros, York Wines projects revenues of 2 crore rupees 
in 2010. Keeping in mind the large upfront capital costs and the long-term nature of the business, they project a break-even in 2013. For Ravi and Lilo though, the financial goals are only one part of the larger objective. The class which wants to keep themselves away from wine, or they think it is not for them, I, want, I have a message for them that wine is for everybody. Certainly is for everyone. As the sun sets over the York vineyards, it's time to unwind at the winery's signature tasting room. A winemaking business does come with its own set of benefits after all. York Wines is also looking at expanding their product range, including launching sub-200 rupee wines. Can you imagine that actually means that wine, according to this Nasik-based startup, will no longer be a drink just for the elite?